following video demonstrates how to calculate simple volumes in Enforce. I'll begin by going to this model that's already been created for us. Go to the camera, we can see eight spiral heaps here waiting to be modelled. So I'll first create the DTM. If I go to the 3D view, we can now see those mounds nice and clearly. I'll begin by just tidying up the triangles. So I'll do that by deleting them by a cut line. Okay, so that should be the triangles pretty much tidied up now. Just check that in the 3D view. Okay, so they all look good. So now we've got our triangles tidied up. We can go to the DTM menu, come down to volumes by prisms. And I'll begin by using the datum height option, which puts an infinite plane through the site at the lowest level in the model, which in this case has been identified as just over 5.1. I won't bother plotting the table of results for the moment. And if I go OK, and of course then just projects the volumes of the triangles down to that datum. And here we can see that we have a total volume of 26,336 cubic meters of material. So what we're saying there is we use the lowest height in the model and we project each spoil heap down onto that, we get a total of about 26,300. However, obviously not all of these spoil heaps will lie perfectly on that plane. Some will be quite a lot higher, so there's an awful lot of space between the plane and the spoil heap, which obviously is getting in there and increasing our volumes unnecessarily. So to try and get a more accurate result, we'll try an incline plane option now. If we go up to DTM, come down to Volumes by Prism, and select Incline Plane. On to Plot Table. So what I do now is I pick three points, or three or more points, that sit on the plane that I want to try and define. So I'm picking points that lie at the extremities of my site. If I now right click, Enforce recalculates the volumes to suit my inclined plane. As we can see, we've gone from 26,336 down to just under 17,000. So by specifying an inclined plane, we've instantly saved ourselves quite a lot in the volume, proving that an inclined plane is more accurate than a horizontal plane, given that these spoil heaps obviously don't all lie on a flat surface. However, the inclined plane may not necessarily be the best solution either. Some of these spoil heaps could be sitting quite high above it and we wouldn't know. So what we'll do now is we'll create a, a volume using the bases, which will give us a much more accurate result because then each mound will be considered individually and we won't have to worry about the inaccuracies introduced by having to worry about all the other mounds at the same time. So a third way of calculating the volumes is by using strings. We now pick the base string of each of our mounds. What we're doing here is identifying a different string to fit a different inclined plane through for each of these surfaces. So we choose inclined plane. Don't worry about the table. Press OK. And here we go. We can now see itemized volumes for each of the individual mounds. So we've used horizontal planes, inclined planes, and inclined planes again, but this time individualized to each mount. The most accurate way, however, though, is to actually use the base strings themselves and model them so they form a complete cap on along the bottom, and then put them in a model on their own so we can calculate volumes between two surfaces, which will give us the exact volume of the mounds. So to get our second surface, we're going to extract the base strings and put them in another model, DTM them, and use that to properly cap our mounds. So if I query the base strings, that's BB1, that's BB2, BB3, and so on. So if I select all of the BB strings and copy and paste them into another model, that should be sufficient. So I right click in my model, I'm down to select, choose BB, and I put a star on the end. It's a wild card so that it picks all the BB codes, whether they're BB1s, 2s, and so on. There we go. So I right click, I'll choose copy, I'll 
create a new model with bases and paste them in there. If I view that, I need to create the DTM. There we go, so that's our bottom of our volumes, i.e. that's our capping surface, which will give us a much more accurate result. If I go back to the heap, I still need a way though of identifying the individual mounds. So to do that, we use something called groups. Groups allow triangles to be individually identified, or rather grouped together, so that when we calculate volumes, we can highlight the areas we're interested in and get the volumes localized to just those groups. We go to the groups button. If I go to load, we've already got some groups in here. Mound one, mound two, mound three, and so on, which we've given different fill styles. I'll just delete these two that I don't need. So I make mound one the current group. If I just say add by rectangle, there's mound one. Change it to mound two. And then repeat for all the other groups. Finally, mound eight. So there's our mounds all grouped up. So all we have to do now is go to ETM, come back down to volumes by prisms, leave it on projected surface because that's how we calculate volumes between different models. This time I will plot the table. Press OK. It's now asking me which model I want to compare this against. So I press OK again. Okay, I'll select the defaults for the table, the colour and the title. Press OK. Put that down. Here we can see our volume results. If I quickly look at the text report, this backs that up. And we can see now the exact quantities for each of our amounts and the overall total. So if you remember before when we used our horizontal surface, we had 26,600 and something. When we used the inclined plane, we had 16,000 something using the inclined plane that is for the entire site. When we used the inclined plane locally or localized to each mound that gave us the correct volume and by using the projected surface option we end up with the most accurate result possible because we've used the bases to cap the mounds and so not introduce any external errors. And that concludes calculating volumes in Enforce.